It is November 8, 2018. Wow, we have crazy just exploding. I'll show you the leftist crazy in a moment, but we have another mass shooter, a war vet. Looks like, you know, a typical guy who, well, apparently decided to take a 45 caliber handgun into a bar called the Borderline and kill 13, not 12, 13. What was the number of the dead at the synagogue? Was it 13? Can't remember. Ian Long, 29 years old, a soldier who received two accommodations. Apparently he had mental illness, PTSD. You know, I can't believe how nothing begs questions in this country anymore. Okay, we do have frequencies. They can. They can make people behave in a way that they would not ordinarily. We have the technology today to create Manchurian candidates. We have the technology today to make people go into bars and shoot people. But no, I'm not going to look into that. I'm just going to get myself more and more absorbed in the abject, dramatic insanity that has taken place in our country. Unprecedented. And when you have a culture that changes so radically, quickly, rapidly, in a healthy brain, that should make people question what the hell is going on here. But the, no, they don't. Um, whether this was a hoax, which means no one died, or a false flag, that means people did die. These shooting events are used to implement agendas. Gun control. This was a 45 caliber handgun. He walked in, apparently he threw smoke bombs into the bar and killed 13 people with a 45 caliber handgun. I don't know guns. Uh, clearly it must have been a semi-automatic. I don't know how many rounds you can put into a semi-automatic. I think 15 or maybe 30. I don't know how many, but he was capable with a handgun to kill 13. That should beg questions. Nobody stopped him. Okay, so he threw smoke bombs in, but there was nobody to stop him. He apparently killed the bouncer of this bar, then killed two employees, and then killed 10 of the customers of this bar. And he's dead. Now, very often, with these shooting events, the shooter ends up dead. Or, if caught alive, we never hear anything about the shooter. We never see the shooter. They seem to get put in, I don't know, 24-7 isolation. We never do see the victims. And very often with these shooting events, well, people pick it apart and find that, nope, just another orchestrated uh, mass shooting. And very often we'll find that the shooter was programmed. Yeah, it sounds crazy what I'm saying, but if you look into these events, you know, because you've done the research regarding the technology that we now have, it's not so crazy. But people who are enjoying life without using that incredible brain given to them, they just stopped using it. It's such a gift and people don't use it. Rather frightening. You know, I will link below to this live 
broadcast on this shooting, you can, uh, especially those who who want the evidence, um, you watch these people. And I have to show you this. These are two kids who were at the bar and, well, look at their affect when they're talking about the friends, their friends, who died. Cole and Matt are joining us now. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, can you describe, Cole, what you were doing when you first heard the gunshots? Uh, we were just standing, me and Matt were standing next to each other talking to some of our friends. And uh, I had a line of sight of the bar and that was what, what I was doing. Are all of your friends accounted for? Uh, unfortunately not. You have not been able to reach the friends that you were with that evening yet? Uh, most of them, yes, uh, but there's a couple that we're still, we're still missing. Describe the scene inside the bar. Uh, it was, before it happened, it was just a normal Wednesday night, just having a good time. And as soon as it all started, it just went to utter chaos real quick. How did you try and hide yourself and your friends and ultimately escape? Uh, we both tried to get as many people behind cover as we could. Uh, I was next to an exit that exits out onto a patio where uh, people smoke. And when I went out there, there was a bunch of people out there who had no idea that anything was going on because they were away from the noise. Uh, and I told all of them to hop the fence and get out of there. And Matt, what was going through your mind and what was your reaction once you started hearing it? Did you recognize this for what it was the minute it started? Um, when, I, when I heard the first shots, um, I knew exactly what was going on. Gunshots aren't something that you, you mistake for anything else. They're a very distinct noise. Uh, I, looked, I looked immediately up to where the noise was coming from and I, I saw the uh, the shooter, he was a tall, dark figure, probably 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 and he was uh, pointing a handgun over the counter towards the, the workers that were working there and just started firing. And so my instinct kicked in and um, I had to save my family and friends. Um, we had to make sure that we got as many of them out of there as possible. So we we dropped to the floor and hid underneath a, uh, a pool table until I heard the first round of shots cease. And we figured that that was the end of his magazine, at least, that he had run out of, of, of bullets to fire. Um, and at that point, I looked to my left and I saw that someone had thrown one of the bar stools through the window to create an exit. And so I grabbed the nearest bar stool that was next to me um, and threw that through and then me and probably four other guys began shuffling men and women and uh, people as young as 18 out of the out of the back windows uh, into the embankment below just so that we could get everyone out of there um, and just keep as many of us safe as possible. So your instinct Matt was not just to run and get out of there yourself but to help the others who were who were also still inside. Yeah, these, these, these people that we were here with, this is our family. Um, Cole and I both come here uh, weekly, and we've known a lot of these people for upwards of 10, 15 years. We have grew up with them, and so it's not, it's not something where you just get out of there and fend for yourself. It's what can I do to protect as many of my friends as possible because my, my life is, is taken care of. I know where I'm going when I die, so to give my friends and my family the chance to, to live another day, that's, I want nothing more than that. Um, and so. You know, listen, if, if I lost friends, if they were dead in a bar, I would not be saying, okay, interview me. I would not uh, be displaying the kind of affect that you see here, which is cold, uh, which is, there's no affect that shows shock, nothing. All right. Well, we've gone through this, certainly since I've been on YouTube for six years.
this has been going on. Can't get through to Americans to, real, uh, to make them realize uh, that something else is happening, that these events are orchestrated and they always put up the, I'm sorry to say, actors. Um, and a 45 caliber handgun, he talks about that he must have been changing magazines or run out of his magazine. Where were, th this bar apparently was really crowded and there were no men to take that guy out. But these, I mean, what are they, 20-somethings? Uh, yeah, family and friends. And, well, um, he knows where he's going once he's dead, so he's right there uh, to help you know, others get them out of the bar. All right, I, I don't, there's something wrong. Again, there's something wrong here. Now, he just gives this, this little grimace on his face when he's talking about his friends being dead. You are not to have any security in this country anymore. You will not have the feeling of security and safety anymore. So this shooting, it's a 45 caliber handgun, and we know that there is an agenda to take guns away from Americans. So now it's a handgun. Um, we're in trouble. And I will say the reason why we are in trouble is because we do not have Americans. Everybody is going after one another. The divide and conquer strategy has been brilliant. The takeover of this country, if they were dropping bombs, all Americans would unite against that war. So instead, they do this war. And understanding that Americans have been living a delusion their entire life, believing that they are brave and courageous and brilliant and morally superior and all this kind of stuff, they know that they have a population of lost people. And when you have a population filled with an awful lot of lost people, don't know who they are, what they're about, but they talk a big game, they do the talk, but don't do the walk, they know they're easily manipulated, and they're not going to be able to uh, think too much about what's going on. But knowing that the people are not brave and courageous themselves, instead they like to glorify the soldiers who are brave and courageous killing innocent people in other countries but the people themselves are not and they knew that people who will just slap on the back of their car I support our troops this magnetic yellow ribbon they knew how lost they were because Americans don't support our troops. The reason why I'm focusing on our troops is because this one, this shooter, oh, this is not a shooting uh, to take out Jews like the last one. This one is, oh, country music night where you have a lot of lovers of country music, Thousand Oaks, California, and it's being described as the safest, <laughs> the safest community in our nation, you are not to have any safety. They're ripping it away from you. They are ripping your security away from you. So this shooter now is going to be a soldier. You have to. This is part of the, the agenda. You need to be scared of these soldiers, the war vets. 
doesn't matter how many accommodations they have received or medals that they have received. You are to be scared of them. In part, that is an, object, a, a, an objective here. Um, you know, look at the crazy. Ruth Bader Ginsburg hospitalized after fracturing three ribs in fall. Now, this woman is very old. She has numerous medical problems. She's still sitting on the bench because they have lifetime appointments. They never step down when they really should. But we have Americans now, people concerned, offering their ribs and their organs. Take my ribs, Ruth. Take my organs, Ruth. Are you kidding me? You know, we, we have this idea of celebrity. And yeah, politicians, just like actors. Oh, you're famous. Oh my God, I love you. Let me give you my rib when you break yours. Who would do that? Is that just uh, people offering their ribs to Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Um, is that true? Are people, are Americans actually doing that? Making these offers? Or is that just yet another lie that we're fed to make us all think that we are surrounded by crazy people. We live in a mental institution. We have been living in a mental hospital. That's what this country is. It's an open air psychiatric institution. It has been, and it's been very obvious that it has been for so many years. And not just the two that Trump has been in the White House, but the eight that Obama has been in the White House. Oh, the eight that Bush and Cheney were in the White House. We live in a mental institution with an awful lot of Americans who have so lost their mind or never had one. And now crazy is exploding. So the Dems, right? They, <laughs> I guess they're feeling very confident that they won the House. I don't know. But Rachel Maddow organizing street marches to protest sessions firing. All right. I do believe everything is orchestrated. How it is that Americans can watch these people and think that they are receiving news, objective, th th these are our objective mainstream media reporters. No, they are activists and they are doing their job to feed you lie after lie the propaganda being made legal here in our country. Americans don't seem to care about that. Smith, Montag, uh, forget it. We're just going to repeal that. That act that made propaganda illegal. Using propaganda against the American people. It was illegal, though they were using it anyway. But now it's exploded. They repealed the smith Month Act making propaganda quite legal. Reporters can lie to the American people. They can stage these events, the mass shooting events. They can do whatever the hell they want. And Americans just eat it all up as if it's real. So we've got Rachel Maddow, your MSNBC reporter that an awful lot of people still regard as uh, what? Smart? A, an actual reporter of news. She's your propaganda reporter feeding you her opinions, not giving you objective news. It has been clear for years, but it should be very clear here. She is organizing street marches to protest Sessions firing. She's an activist. She's not a reporter. But do Americans care? No. And we're still stuck on the Mueller. The Russians, Trump, Sessions, Mueller. Two years of that. Two years of it. 
stuck. Nothing gets resolved. Nothing gets resolved in this country. And ordinary Americans should be really upset about that, but you can't even resolve problems with ordinary Americans. Everything has just been a descent into utter madness. 900 plus events and protests planned for tomorrow already. Wow! Rachel, you sure are a miracle worker. Are we to believe that 900 plus events and protests suddenly got organized in less than 24 hours? No. It was planned before. And you also have to think, did the Democrats, and look, we don't have two parties, okay? The Republicans have shown restraint and maturity, and the Democrats have just lost their, I don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, um, my having been a Democrat my entire life, I'm seeing something that I've never seen before when things uh, start to change radically and you're living an unprecedented time, that's when the Democrats should be using their brains. And we don't seem to hear the loud voice coming from the same Democrats. No, your leftist crazies have shouted you out. Well, you got to shout them <laughs> back into their place. Any Democrat that could be um, looking at what has happened to that party ha should be so embarrassed to even be a Democrat today because the behaviors are so bloody insane that it's like remarkable. They don't. They can't reason anymore. They can't have reasonable debate anymore. They don't even talk about the issues. They are programmed to just hit you with name calling. Nazi, racist, um, misogynist, whatever. If you have a different opinion, that's what you Democrats have become. Now, I don't believe that our votes are counted correctly. I do believe our voting is manipulated to get the results that they want. So, I guess they didn't get the blue wave, but they got the house back. The blue wave would have been very obvious that something's wrong. But getting the house back that allows people to think, okay, well, they didn't get a blue wave and maybe our votes were legitimate. And I don't believe that. I believe that all of this is orchestrated. And they had these protests and events, the 900 already planned before the election. So then the Democrats get that house back and boom. You've got an awful lot of people who don't know how to think, who don't understand what is happening. They are manipulated, triggered easily to get out there by their so-called leaders, one of them, Rachel Maddow, but all of it orchestrated. We're being played like Pavlov's dogs, which is really so sad to watch. So sad. Um... We're going to see crazy explode. Violent crazy explode. Everybody should be questioning why nothing has been resolved. The Mueller, Trump, Russia investigation, all of this crap. That it's still going on. But it is absolutely um, reflective of our people. We don't resolve anything. And we're fine. Look at all of these events that have been organized already. Okay. Our, our problem are the American people who are not thinking. Antifa raises its head again. 
they published the home addresses of Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Neil Patel, and Coulter. Every Democrat should be outraged that this is taking place. And those who are not researching Antifa and understanding its history and that Antifa was unleashed in Italy and uh, uh, many European countries during World War or before World War II um, and recognizing that the programming of Americans today is the same programming of the Europeans uh, decades ago getting them all riled up and fighting one another and just screaming insults. You no longer have reasonable arguments. You just scream at anybody who has a different opinion. My God. Okay, so they're outside Tucker Carlson's. Or no, I'm sorry, that was smash racism outside Tucker Carlson's home. So smash racism works with Antifa. Tucker Carlson, we will fight. We know where you sleep at night. This is what we are living. You Democrats, man. I don't. There's something very wrong with you. If you're just sitting back. You know, when you're still caught in the matrix, but you see that your party has gone bat shit crazy, violent, harassing people just because they don't agree with you and you're not doing anything. You're part of the violence. You help it go on. You encourage it. Ah, nobody is standing up to us. We will continue. Racist scumbag, leave town. Everybody's a racist today. And it couldn't be more a lie. Now, I don't, I'm not into the Matrix anymore. So, mainstream media, yeah, the right mainstream media is still part of the propaganda machine unleashed on the American people. But what we are now seeing is the left behaving in a way that would make anybody really angry. And you know what, you Democrat, liberal, progressive leftists? You want to fight? You want to fight, clearly, all of this violence? You are going to be so taken out so quickly with these Republicans. Because you don't stand a chance. I know you. I know that you are scared little children. All of you up, you know, with your take away the guns, take away the guns. Not understanding what the Second Amendment is about. The Republicans are evidencing a restraint, but you go after them, you're going to lose in a heartbeat because I know you guys. The Republicans, the right, they have far more courage than you do. And they have far more maturity than you do. <laughs> so this, they couldn't get the race riots going. They're getting the left-right riots going. You know, this civil war, which I believe that we've been in for many, many years. Um, but should it be recognized? Should it explode into a civil war that is obvious? The left, you're going down fast. <laughs> uh, knock, knock. Hashtag knock, knock, Tucker. Every night you spread fear into our homes, fear of the other, fear of us, fear of them. Okay, so does mainstream, uh, so does CNN, MSNBC. All of these people, you know, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, I have listened to, and I will say that they speak more truth than CNN, MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, all these people. But they're still so stuck in the matrix reporting propaganda and also encouraging those on the right 
to stay stuck on all of the Trump, Russia, Mueller, Sessions, all of the horseshit that they want Americans to stay stuck in. So they're right there helping that along. But are they racist? No. No. Not at all. So it wasn't just Tucker Carlson. It was Ted Cruz. You, you on the left, man, you are showing a behavior that is so despicable and so... Well, if it wasn't so violent, it would be so childish that if we had sane Americans, they would just be kind of like knocking you away. Get out of here. Oh, but you're promoted on mainstream media. So then you would have to think there's an agenda here. But Department of Homeland Security, um, Nielsen, Cruz, Mitch McConnell and his wife, do they ever confront these people for the corruption that's taking place in D.C.? Mitch McConnell, his wife, Chen, Secretary Chen, of, I can't even remember. Uh, she, uh, a former Wells Fargo banker who is so corrupt. And do they ever? No, they're going to scream these things at them that don't make any sense. They don't want them screaming what's legitimate because they don't want to wake up the American people. Oh, everyone there is corrupt. They're going to scream insanity. It's all staged, but you Democrats, you can't see how despicable is your Maxine Waters. My God. So now she's heading a powerful committee and she's going to be impeach 45, impeach 45, impeach 45. It's all about system breakdown, failure. And all of these people are promoting it, working towards it, and getting you all riled up as it goes on. So anyway, Americans really should be noticing that there is a profound breakdown in all, in everything, uh, civility and reasonable behavior, mature behavior, moral behavior in our country. And the only way to get it back is for those Americans to work very, very hard um, to make sure that they are not behaving similarly. You know, it's very easy to behave like a crazy person if you're surrounded by crazy people. It's very easy to just let go of your own morals when you are surrounded by people who have no morals and they just behave in any which way they want to. But we do have an awful lot of Americans who are still stuck in the matrix and they can't get out and they don't want to get out and they don't want the truth and they don't want to research. And what we are going to be seeing now is more and more violence. So many of us have been saying that. If we can't get any of these agendas stopped, crazy is going to explode in a violent way. And it is exploding with a violence, with Americans going after one another. People being abandoned by their own families, friends, friends. I've received comments and emails from subscribers who have had friends for 45 years. And it done. People having friends for 50 years, no longer. People are walking away from one another. This is not good behavior. Um, and when we're alone, we have no protection. So that is the really sad part about all of this. If Americans could just finally listen to their um, local community uh, or conspiracy theorists, actually just listen and not just shoot them down, throwing insults at them like they're crazy, just like the Antifa members, just like our quote-unquote leaders, you're seeing behavior now in this country that we've never seen before. Almost no one has any integrity. Everybody just looks like they're in seventh grade behaving with so, oh, everybody's walking the low road, behaving in ways 
that you would expect a seventh grader to be behaving, but these are our leaders. Maxine Trump, impeach 45, impeach 45. You go out there, uh, and she's talking to her constituents, you go out there and harass those on the right. Are you kidding me? If Americans could just unite and stand up and say, we're done with all of this, we now just want to band together and build up our own communities, the local government official Nazis, the state government official Nazis, the federal government official Nazis, done with all of you, dictating how we will live, and you, the dictators of how we will live, are examples of the lowest of the low, despicable, immoral, corrupt to the core, immature bullies coming from both sides. Trump, Maxine Waters, Nancy Pelosi. The, okay, if we can't do that, we're going to go down really fast now. Oh, we're, we are so low. But I, people are going to go after one another. More so. It's like a mean spirit has taken over. God, I hope you guys are okay. I so wish we could build a community where we could all just remove ourselves from this support one another in real life, build a community in real life where we could go. But because governments have centralized their power, that's not possible. Anyway, guys, all links are below.